In the state known for Friday Night Lights, it's all about this Saturday night with number 19, Texas. Comes a call into Lubbock to meet Texas Tech. Senior night, 26 Red Raiders will be competing for the final time on home soil at Jones AT&T Memorial Stadium. The building is sold out. Cliff Kingsbury knows all too well as both a player for Mike Leach in this series and as head coach what it means. They have beaten Hookham two of the last three years. They'd like to make it three out of four. But make no doubt about it, there's a lot at stake. Traditionally, quality of life for the head coach comes into play when these two get together. Let's listen in as the Red Raiders make their way out. It's about quality of life. It's about emotion. And you got to be asking the really difficult questions right now, Timmy. After you win two in a row, at some point, it no longer becomes an upset. Yeah. Here come the horns. And for them, what must be going through their minds? Well, they're excited right now, but they've got injuries on the defensive side of the ball. They've got to step up. That guy right there, we unpack his story in a little bit. They've got challenges. <laughs> with, with very rhythmic, Spencer Tillman, I'm Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. Well, make no doubt, five weeks ago, when they took down the Sooners, Everyone was saying Texas was back. Well, fast forward to now, they dropped two in a row. They're no longer sixth in the country. Still a path to the Big 12 title, Spencer. Yeah. But they don't want to lose three in a row and not three of their last four to this club. Well, Sam Ellinger is going to be the key for them if they're going to continue. 246 straight passes without an interception. He's got to continue to play that way clean because they've got some issues on the defensive side of the ball. They've got to extend possessions. I think he can do it. The question is, stay away from getting in a shootout with this bunch. We welcome a new member to our really kind of crazy team. J.P. Morosi, you have watched him in baseball. Tonight you get him in football. Give me the injury story, J.P. <laughs> Good evening, Tim. Well, at this time last year, Jet Duffy was playing on the Texas Tech practice squad at receiver. His assignment tonight is different. His second career start at quarterback for the Red Ravers in place of the injured Alan Bowman. Now for the University of Texas, some late breaking injury news there. Colin Johnson, their second leading receiver, is out. He did not participate in the warm-up. He had a brace on his left knee. He will not play this evening. On defense, Brecken Hager begins just playing on third down. A big game needed by Gary Johnson. Tim, back to you. No doubt about it. Wow. Johnson, the outstanding star outside linebacker, will not have the kind of help. It is breezy, and the temperature is cooling down. The wind is out of the south. It is gusting to upwards of 20 miles per hour right now at about 15 or so. Tim, not having Colin Johnson is a huge deal because it's going to affect the coverage ability. David Gibbs on this back end for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Well, Texas won the toss, deferred, and here's Daquan Bowman. Dancing and prancing down the sidelines. He will give Texas Tech outstanding field position to open. And let's get Tillman's takes when the Red Raiders have the ball. Well, it's about tempering your emotions. You talked about those 26 seniors out there. You know, success in this game is about doing what is routine. All those flowers and emotions, all that stuff, evaluating the four years of your life. Man, it's tough to flip that switch and get focused once again. But you got to be able to do it. The Longhorns, ultimately, they've got to step up. Those backups, the injuries, it's a triage unit you've got to step up and play the game De Leon Ward is the setback Jet Duffy red shirt sophomore is the quarterback and they'll swing it out expect a lot of this Ward out of the backfield he's to midfield and uh, he was tackled up around the head by Chris Boyd 17 yards and it looks like we may have I thought we may have a flag here it was up around the face mask he just clotheslined him there. Good, well, it was good around, no call. Yeah, it was around the head and neck area. I don't think he grabbed it, though. Yep. 17 yards to pick up, and the ball in Texas territory after just one play. Keep an eye tonight on Antoine Wesley, who's been a record-breaking performer in a single season. He'll be passing 
QT from a year ago is now playing in the big leagues and will be honing in on Crabtree's overall single season record soon as Dalyon Ward forges ahead for a couple of yards. We touched on Jet against Oklahoma when he was forced to come into the game after the injury to Alan Bowman. He was 9 of 17 in the game. Youngster they really have high hopes for and they're going to probably roll him out a great deal to give him a better opportunity to find open receivers and use that ability to use his legs. Timmy, the outside zone was the first play Texas Tech ran in the run game. They're going to try to push that corner big time. Second and eight. Quick curl taken by Wesley, as we mentioned. A guy that they're going to be looking at over and over. He's in the middle of a monster year. Had hip surgery and then came back from it and has become a big time talent in this offense. Yeah, the right defensive end for Texas, Brecken Hager, is the guy that will be in the third down scenarios, not so much first and second down. That's why Texas Tech is going to try to stretch that edge to see if it's soft. Third down and five. Trips to the top of your screen. The big play receiver is T.J. Vasher. Made outstanding catches all last year. They go for Wesley. Well defended along the boundary by Chris Boyd, their outstanding senior from Gilmer, Texas had him all the way and it's a fourth down and five but not uncommon for Texas Tech to go for it at any place on the field and certainly at the Texas 45. Tim that's great eyeballs by you because on the short side of the field the twin package look that they had was absolutely shut down by the back end of Texas so the route had to come back to the deep over too much time a little bit overthrown not successful. So fourth and five nine of 13 on fourth down tries this year so this is not uncommon for them. Blitz Johnson up the gut. The pass is caught. It's a quick slant right into the hands of Seth Collins. This is the guy that's going to be rocking the world of Lubbock, Texas in the years to come. Well, the key has got to be a three step drop. It's got to be out. The ball's got to be out quick. The recognition of the scissor stunt. The ball is on the point, and they're off to the races again. Little RPO look that time. And it's caught by JD on high. Number 88, the redshirt senior. We mentioned one of. 26 being honored tonight. He picks up seven. Second and three coming up with the ball on the right hash at the 31 of the horn. J.D. is not the biggest guy in the world. He's only about 5'10", 190 pounds, but at Hereford, Texas, watch this guy. He is really difficult to defend in the slot. That's some ranch in Hereford. <laughs> They run it off the left side. A design run for Jeff Duffy. Six yards and a first down. Well, the Red Raiders moving after the tremendous return to open to get the ball at the plus 40 and converting a fourth down out pattern to Antoine Wesley wow. it, it down to the five he almost sprung away from Boyd boy this kid is special Chris Boyd is playing off technique and he drives on this ball his eye discipline is decent he looks inside when it's released but it's just poor tackling on the back end of that play you got to be able to finish this is something that Texas has had problems with as down the stretch the last two weeks they faced teams that really have stretched them in the throw game you've got to focus on the fundamentals and that's blocking and tackling in this case on the defensive side of the ball out of the shotgun daily on Ward play fake over the middle it's caught it is touchdown, T.J. Vasher. Chris Brown and Devontae Davis were back there trying to cover, but Vasher, he's got those long levers. And when he comes back and tries to time this thing right over the top, Duffy does a nice job of putting touch on that ball. Lofts it, that's called dropping a dime and letting the guy go high pointed and pull it down for a nice soar. Great protection up front. Nice touch on the ball. Elevating. Scoring. Outstanding. That's the fifth touchdown catch for T.J. Vasher. The sixth thrown to him. And Duffy with his fifth of the year. Passing and Clayton Hatfield's extra point is good. Just throw it high and let your athletic wide receiver go get it. Seven nothing Red Raiders. 66-yard drive, Basher on the receiving end, and uh, they used a little bit of everything in their arsenal. DeLeon Ward out of the backfield, Antoine Wesley, and then Basher to sort of finish it off. 
at 6'5 and 6'6 height at wide receiver doesn't hurt. Yeah, Kevin Johns, the offensive coordinator, doing a fine job of bringing that run game, elevating it to another level. Yeah, from St. Louis, Missouri, and the IMG Academy committed that personal foul on the kick, which really backs up Hellinger for this opening drive. Trey Watson is in the backfield with him. Personal foul was half the distance from, and now you see from the spot of the foul, it's back to the 13 yard line. Ellinger in some trouble, gets to the 15, Colin Hill the stop, and here at Tillman's takes for Texas. Well, it's pretty quite simple. It's about extending possessions. It's going to be tough to do that when you're getting just one or two yards on first down. And then alternately for Tech, physical play, play discipline. That's how Texas actually likes to play. And that's what they're facing up front. With this big, massive front, it's not an outpitch running back in the equation, but with the receivers, even though with Collins down, they still can be a vertical threat. Well, this has been a more consistent offensive line through the course of the year. Running some zone read, and it's Trey Watson, the Cal transfer, who burrows up ahead to about the 18-yard line for a gain of three. Sean Johnson, number seven, the redshirt senior from NS Texas with the tackle. Yeah, but ideally you want to be on the plus side of this on, on third down. You don't want to be third and five. You want to be have third and two, third and three. So you put this defense in a run conflict scenario where personnel-wise, it's tough for them to decide what you're going to do. Well, you see where they are in third down conversions. 44% for the course of the year, and this is a third and five. Watson remains the setback. Ellinger for the nice. corner, and he finds his man. That's little Jordan Humphrey, and LJ turns around his defender, Adrian Fry, the freshman phenom, and is out ahead for a big game. John Bonney, the transfer from Texas, pushed him out. There's Adrian out there in press coverage on the outside. He turns, and just a little sit-down route behind him, and again, that stop route was enough to get the kid out of Lamar, Texas, in a position where he's not favorable. Gain of 19, so it's first down. Quick curl to the tight wow, end. Burton. Incomplete Andrew Beck, the intended receiver, the roommate of Sam Ellinger. Now, you mentioned this as you were coming out, as Texas was coming out on the field. I thought it was interesting. Tom Herman wanted to control the ball, but at the same time admitted to us that they're better when they go tempo. So that's yeah. an interesting dilemma, as you mentioned. But I, I that think they he face. was being very transparent with us on that because he, he respects the fact that we watch the game and we know it. He knows they don't want to get in a shootout, but in order to slow this game down, take time off the clock, they've got to possess the ball and take possessions away ultimately from Texas Tech. Texas Tech's going to bring pressure on second and 10 off the edge. Ellinger runs away from it and on the move, throws it incomplete, intended for Gerard Hurd. You know, Ellinger at times has struggled with his accuracy, Spencer, but he's been much better this season. And more than anything else, Tim Beck and Tom Herman said he gets us into the right place. Well, that's the, the advantage that he provides you. The, uh, aside from the fact that he's thrown 246 straight passes without an interception, they put the bulk of the responsibility of playing calls and changing at the line of scrimmage on his shoulders, and it's not been too heavy for him. First time he's had two systems or the same system in place in successive years. Yeah. That's been a big factor. Yeah, such as the carousel of college football. All out blitz, quick slice, nice. caught by Humphrey. And little Jordan picking him up and putting him down. How about that speed? 40 yards of first down for Texas. Well, on the outside corner, this is what happened when you don't play with the kind of presence of mind Adrian Fry needs to have. Sure-handed tackling against a big frame wide receiver that can pluck the ball and separate with you away from you with speed on the other end. Little Jordan can break away at any given time. Ellinger. Looping it long in that direction again. This time, little Jordan incomplete. Covered well by Adrian Fry, who had been beaten on the prior play. So here's the play again by little Jordan. Just a nice stop move, and Adrian Fry just gets pivoted and spun around, and he heads to the sideline. You know, if Collins is on the opposite side, it would be virtually impossible to shut this group down, and they possibly could play a lot faster than they're playing right now. But you can see a three-receiver formation probably diverts them from doing some of the things that they would want to do with those big targets outside. Uh, LJ now with two catches for 59 yards. He will have to make the big plays tonight. And that's Watson again in trouble as he tries the left side. And trying to run behind Patrick Vahey, 77, the more experienced and leader in that offensive front. Eli Howard, 53, met him immediately. 
And it's third down and long. Michael Mays was in that group too. I mean, I'll tell you what, David Gibbs has got some young guys over there, but some guys are stepping up. What year over year success they've had from last year. They've been turning folks over at 29 last year. They want to continue to improve that area, but as a group, they've had elite success, in my opinion, in terms of improvement. Well, they've been able to get off the field on third down yep. at a really good clip, and they face that now, this defense, on third and 10. Bellinger whips it across the middle. Little Jordan with another first down. Inside the 25, the 23, that's a gain of 15. Well, they like Fry. They like the matchup. They've been picking on him tonight. Again, you can see Ellinger showing you the touch of gear. Nice double team on the front side of this play. He brings those eyes and settles down and gets it into the very tight window beside, between and beside those outreached arm of those Red Razors. Mark the ball at the 24-yard line. Trips wide receiver set to the bottom of your screen. He'll roll in that direction. Now pressure comes and down he goes. Right up the gut, Broderick Washington. Out of Longview, Texas. He was a Lobo, and he comes through right up the gut to make the play. As we come to the end of the first quarter, a loss of 10. Now well, we've had a turnover, we've had a lot of pressure. And the Red Raiders have a one touchdown lead through one in this Texas style rivalry. We welcome you back. We open the second quarter. JP Morosi is down on the field with Spencer Tillman, Tim Brando, and Lou Jordan Humphrey is the essence of the Texas offense on this drive. Yeah, just a couple of catches, but 74 yards and explosive plays, Tim. And that's what this Texas team needs. Route Collins on the complimentary side. If they can have success with just one of those big, tall, lengthy wide receivers, they're going to have great success. Well, we know already that Texas Tech has been effective. They've only shut themselves down with the turnover inside the red zone. Otherwise, they've moved the ball up and down the field against the Texas defense. Mm. And now pressure again gets to Ellinger. Nick McCann, 98, coming through there. Sophomore from Texarkana, Arkansas. Boy, that defensive tackle position, the prior play was Broderick Washington, the Longview Lobo that was making, and now his battery mate, Nick McCann, comes in there. The red shirt sophomore, as you said, for Texarkana, Arkansas, comes in. That position has been a very productive position. And believe me, right now, the Longhorns are aware of where the pressure's coming from. Now you can see why David Gibbs, the defensive coordinator, is so high on how this team has improved defensively. Again, pressure and underneath. They go with Hurd and the former quarterback who does have magnificent speed, takes the little screen, moves ahead to get them a little bit better field position to the 35, so a gain of 11, but those sacks basically thwarted this drive and it means a long field goal try coming for Cameron Dicker the freshman from Austin and if they if they don't make it or make it that Colin Hill number 13 the rush linebacker was the guy that made that last play Texas could have gotten much closer but for that saving tackle this would be his longest of the year his prior longest 47 this from 52 with the wind very important that they Got had it. the wind Coming from the south at 15 to 20. So they are on the board. He went two out of two against West Virginia in the defeat last week. And Dicker, the kicker, has Tom Herman feeling better. Just underway, second quarter, 7 3, our score. Memories are made that last a lifetime in rivalries like this on no a senior question. night. And particularly when you have a chance to essentially supplant the role that Texas AM played. Yep, this matchup. It's I a big one. I don't think there's any doubt that since AM vacated for the SEC, this is the series that has the most intrastate hatred within the Big 12. Who would have thought, Spencer, that you would have been holding back your quarterback for Syracuse <laughs> while playing Florida State? Irish is and playing well, though. I mean, that's amazing. And by the way, if you want chaos for the committee, that is in fact a problem for the committee. Seth Collins is stopped behind the line of scrimmage by P.J. Locke. You see the college football playoff picture. Clemson underway now. Alabama, as usual, romped. Michigan, after stuttering at the start, handled Rutgers in short order. Yeah, the Notre Dame team, though, is looking like the 2012 club with Manta. Teo and company and showed up, but Alabama dismantled them in the national championship game. And Got a taste of SEC football. That's JD on high running the quick curl. Gets it out to the 27 yard line for a gain of six. Remember if Notre Dame wins out without the 13th data point they're still in great oh, shape yeah. which means 
two, count them, two of the Power Five conferences would be left out of the college football playoff. And maybe it's just me, but you said that with a little zeal. Yes. I, I'm not quite sure, yeah, but it I'm, sounded like I'm that. a little happy about it. <laughs> some work. Third down and eight. There's a late blitz coming. Yep, here it is. He steps up in the pocket, now lets it fly, and it's incomplete. How about closing on the ball right there? Collins saw Caden Stearns, the freshman. You can tell why they're so high on this kid. What closing skills by Stearns? Well, he's about 6'1", 192. He's a freshman, young kid, as you said, Tim. But he shows you from that strong safety position how much of a factor he can be. With pressure on the outside plus his coverage skill set, this is a pretty good back unit. Another one of the seniors. Dominic Panazolo from Adelaide, Australia will boot it away. Excellent field position should be in the offing for Texas. Deshaun Jamison is back deep in single safety waiting around his 35 yard line. Let's see if he makes some work for this. Yep, that's good, good, excellent punt there. Indeed. That's why you get these guys from yep. Australia. End over end and the ability to angle punts. Guns up in Lubbock. And the Longhorns are trailing by seven. We're in the second quarter of what should be one outstanding night. Son of Alex Gibbs, one of the great assistant coaches in the history of the NFL, still consulting with the New Orleans Saints. Mm -hmm. Deontay Ingram in the game for the first time. Ahead to the 44, we'll give him five. Tony Jones made the stop. You know, his dad's offensive mind as a run game schemer is helping New Orleans, as you pointed out. But this game is really, really fun to talk about when you see the lineage and oh, it gives as part of it. Is it ever? Ingram again, close to the necessary yardage, but Jordan Brooks, number one, makes the play. A pickup of four will call it third down and a yard to go. Little Jordan Humphrey comes back into the game. Gerard Hurd is also in. He'll be in the slot. See three for five on third down conversions. And a designed run for Ellinger and should be enough for a first down. Deontay Ingram is in the backfield on first down. Ellinger is flushed. And he thinks better of it. Steps out of bounds at the 45-yard line, a gain of four. David Gibbs, defensive coordinator for Tech, not relinquishing his attack from the defensive standpoint with pressure from the edges. And you can see it, even with directions calls, where everybody's sliding to one, they're doing it cautiously, making sure Elliger stays in the pocket and they can contain him. Ingram again, nothing doing this time. Maybe a yard or two. Rustin Gordon. Got through there and made the tackle. And they said, when you went on early downs like Texas is doing now, and they're going to go a little bit tempo here to try to move, and that's as he said yesterday, Coach Herman said, we're at our best when we go tempo. Not breakneck pace, but his guys function a lot more when they're a little bit hurried. Third and two, and they go with Trey Watson for the first down. Yeah, he, he told us that he didn't mind the idea of playing this game a little bit like he did the K-State matchup. For different reasons, obviously, with Kansas State when we had them in Manhattan, he wanted to keep the other team from too much ball control. As it turned out, he held on and won a close one before winning the Red River Showdown. This is a little bit different. He wants to keep the explosive That's right. opposition off the field. Back to the 30-yard line they go. Quarterback draw. Nice, nice vision. What a tough kid. I mean, that's just looking at carry people. That's like, I'm going to go really old school on you here. You've made the Tebow comparison, like uh -huh. a right-handed Tebow. Mm -hmm. He ran that one like Roman Gabriel back in the day when he was under pressure. Well, watch him make Joe Wallace, number 97, miss inside. That, that little inside move right there was the difference there. And he took a shot, again, from Joshon Johnson, physically finishing. That's like a big running back. Yeah, Watson. This is a beleaguered Texas Tech defensive front that's nine yards for Watson he just delivered the blow here yeah, look at him he's carrying the ball high and tight just like a running back would and then he gets his pad level down even when he's not lower than the man trying to take him on as Josh Hunt Johnson was on that play he's finishing he is so thick in his lower body Tim he carries it carries it well so now first down with the ball at the 13 yard line and Watson remains the setback 
Ahead to the 10, inside perhaps to the nine yard line. Watson goes. Bonte Dorsey making the tackle. Well, once again, I can't reiterate this enough. Texas is writing the script that's perfect for their success tonight on this extended drive. Got a little bit of help from that personal foul penalty. Watson bounces off the initial tackler and is spun down again by Preston Gordon, 99. Yeah, Jordan Brooks is in there too. And Brooks was there, number one, and Gordon, as you said. Tom Herman's trying to find a play that's going to work down here in this. Getting close to the doorstep of the, the green zone, five yards plus inside. It gets tougher to score down here. Tim Beck is upstairs. Tom Herman calls the, the game offensively, as he has for many, many years in his career. Ball at the nine yard line. They go empty. 18th play now of the drive on third and six. Obviously, zero coverage when they're empty back there. Five wide outs. Here comes pressure off the edge. Over the middle. It's little Jordan Humphrey. Marker down. Let's check on it. Beautiful pass for the touchdown to little Jordan Humphrey. That's going to be good news for Texas, too. A little extracurricular activity back there on the quarterback. Look that way. Well, Cameron Dicker yep. with the extra point. They did get a touchdown. I know it's not necessarily the headline for the moment, but guess what? The Horns have taken the lead. Great work by the replay official, Jack McDonald. It's time for Proven to Last, sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. And huh, Proven to Last is little Jordan Humphrey. <laughs> Look at those numbers, Spence. Well, he's impressive, and, and, and he's partly responsible for why these statistics are starting to even out. Texas now with 135 yards, 10 first down. Tech, 150 yards, so just not a lot of distance between them. Nine first down. So this is virtually an even contest. And right now, because of the way Texas were able to score, it's right in the wheelhouse and how they would prefer to win this game. Slow plotting, long extended drives that keeps this bonded offense of Texas Tech off the field. After the personal foul, they'll kick it at midfield so they can do a lot of things with this. And while well, they decide to boom it through for a touchback. And let's go downstairs to J.P. Morosi. Well, Tim, for the first part of that possession, Dakota Allen, the Texas Tech captain and star linebacker, was not on the field. They're still being very careful with his long-term knee injury. For that reason, Tim, all the more important that Rico Jeffers stays in this football game. Absolutely. A lot has been mentioned about Dakota Allen as a great team leader for this team. Also has the broken hand. You see it's wrapped up. And uh, he'll play hard and strong with that as best he can. But Jeffers, because of the circumstances with Dakota is an absolute must. I mean, keeping him in the game was huge for Texas Tech in that last sequence. Katie on high takes the shallow cross and is ahead to the 28 yard line, maybe the 29. P.J. Locke, another one of the leaders out of Beaumont, Texas, the senior. Great open field tackle by Locke there. But to back to your point about having those two Dakota Allen and Rico Jeffers in the game. Yeah, Texas scored on that last possession, but to not have Rico Jeffers in there. Uh, with those are the two leaders, Dakota Allen at the will position and Rico Jeffers at Mike. That's the heart and soul of that stop unit. DeLeon Ward ran really well early, you might recall. Gets it to the 30 this time. Chris Boyd knocked him down. You know, I really thought that Texas Tech would have some success or more success in the outside zone play, which they did early on. But again, because Texas has been so successful in this long extended drives, keeping them off the field, it almost seems like it hasn't had that much impact. Tonight. 18 plays will do that for yep. you. Third down and two. I've not heard from Basher since the touchdown. It's Ward. He is going to be stopped shy of the first down, about a yard away at the 34 by Charles Omenahu. Yeah, Omenahu was in there, and Charles Nelson, the nose tackle, 97, was in there in the mix as well. And so Coach Klingsbury has got to find a way oh, to change it up a little bit. They're going quick. Yep. This is the play that ran the other day in practice. And quick. Ward, I don't know. I think he uh, got stoned. Yeah, he, he got stoned at the 34, and it's Omenahu that led the charge. They just did not get the push up front. Texas did a nice job of lining up. Let's see where this spot really is. Yeah, that's a it's risky the, call, boy. It tell was. You. It was. If it's the right foot, uh, it's the left foot, and it's going to be short. It's Texas football. Wow. Well, they were working on this situational football yesterday in practice and early in the morning, and this was one of those scenarios where you're trying to quick them, 
get to the line of scrimmage on a short distance situation. And if a guy's not down in his stance, you can lean forward and get a foot or two. Yeah, and you know, that's not the, the, the tallest or largest quarterback to run that. No, that's true. Is that the runner was short of the line the game? They may check this while we're away. Stay right where you are. In the backfield on first and ten for Ellinger. Let's it fly on the curl and a beauty to little Jordan Humphrey. Spun down at the 17 yard line, a gain of 19. Tony Jones with the tackle. Well, it's off coverage across the board. And again, I just love the way, look, Rico Jeffers is dropping back. He's in a rover for position. You see him underneath here. That's too much athleticism. Little Jordan to be on a linebacker in that situation, Tim. That's a mismatch. Ingram ahead to the 10. As athletic as the rover position requires, Rico Jeffers is no match for an elite level wide receiver that's able to spin and pivot like that. Gibbs. Yeah, well, David Gibbs is no stranger to having to deal with pressure put on him by this scheme and philosophy. But those types of calls, though, when you're not on the plus side of the 50 yard line can be particularly challenging. Second and six. What up a pistol look now with yep. Ingram in the backfield. Play fake Ellinger. To the corner and down to the two yard line complete. Caught by Devin Duvernay. We mentioned we had not called his number yet. Well, they looked in his direction that time, and it's first and goal. Well, one thing is evident for me Adrian Fry is the guy they're working on. They like him no matter where he is, and they're flipping him to the field, going pace. Touchdown. They just stole that one. Yeah, they did. Ingram gets it in. Uh, that's where pace and tempo is a tactical advantage, Tim. Texas. Got prepared and ready. Texas Tech alternately was not in position. Couldn't get set defensively to defend. This game beginning to take on the look of the game we had a year ago in Austin, where Texas had control of it much of the way. You might recall that particular year, a season ago, it was McLean Carter that was called upon to get his first ever start. And then Sheminick, the oh, veteran yeah. player, came in to lead the comeback. That was too easy. Yeah, it was too easy. Dicker for the extra point. How important would it be now for Tech to at least answer with three? They have to answer right now, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at uh, Deontay Ingram, who, along with Trey Watson, has been able to run the ball really well. 17 unanswered points. After going for it on fourth down, a calculated risk gone wrong for Cliff Kingsbury. Vaughn Bowman is back deep. They got a great return, you might recall, to open the game to give them good field position. But Jet Duffy lets this one fly, and it's complete for J.D. on high. And we can't underscore how important this series really is, can we, Spencer? It's huge, and they're going, trying to stretch the field here. That's a big-time throw across the field from Duffy. Let's see how they continue to work. If they're trying to get this back in a bunch, or if they're going to try to take a more methodical approach. Texas has been able to control the football in the second quarter just the way Herman wanted to. Flushed, and they go screen to DeLeon Ward. His quick feet will net the 45-yard line, two yards shy of the first down. And they need more of that, Tim. That was just the ninth play in this quarter for Texas Tech. Again, Texas effectively keeping the ball away from them. Back in the hunt now. Yep, yeah, he is. A, he should get an invite if nothing else. TJ Vasher makes that catch on a comebacker. It's first down after a 14 yard gain. Well, again, as I t told you, Tim, they can explode anytime, but because Texas has limited their offensive opportunities, they've been shut down. But Vasher just shows you once again how dangerous they can be. That's Tazon Henry, 26, that's in the slot. And here is Jet on a design run. Gets down around the 25-yard line. He may be a yard shy, so the clock continues to run. Yep, I think they'll take a shot here. Is a second down? They've got two. Yeah, they got they got a free down here. Basher to the bottom of your screen. Wow, they decide to run it. Dalyon Ward stopped. Yeah, but I think they feel like they're in a good place right now, Lil. Stopped by Brecken Hager. So third Texas down. Tech takes his third and final time out of the half. Please set the game clock to 17 seconds. He knows how important getting some points of any kind on this drive to answer that controversial decision to go for it on fourth down would be. 
Trouble again, staying on this side, and Duffy takes it out of bounds. I think he did net the number for the first yep, down, so it. they still could take a shot with 12 seconds left. Yeah, so I, as I said, they were working with the free down, in my opinion. I, and now that the ball is on the right hash, they're in the position for the kicker. And if they want to take one more shot to the field, they, they got a chance to do that as well. I think they're going to go they're ahead and out yeah. and take the field goal. Yeah. So Hatfield will set up out of the hold of Reed Bowman. Interesting. The long snapper is Kyle Heffron. This will be a 41 yarder. He hit a long win up last week. He's had a very good season. This one, though, oh, a nice draw. Boy, he did draw that, didn't that he? That baby was wow. outside. Whoa. It was outside the right post and curled in beautifully. That looked like an old Bob Nepper. <laughs> nasty, wicked knuckleball. Look at that. That is outside the upright. <laughs> and like a Tom Lehman drive, <laughs> it draws right to left, right down the fairway. Drop right in there, didn't it? Yeah. Very entertaining. Third game of our triple hitter on Fox tonight at halftime in Lubbock, Texas leads by seven back to Los Angeles. The State Farm halftime show Rob Stone. How do you do a lot on the line bowl eligibility an opportunity for a path to the Big 12 title. You happen to be Texas Tim Brando Spencer Tillman. You'll hear from J.P. Morosi shortly. But even without Colin Johnson Texas has managed to get their big playmaker to be the most effective guy on the field. Yeah little Jordan Humphrey is one of the reasons why they're averaging 13.2 things got a little bit chippy in the early goal as Adrian Fryer. So that was a bad move because you released the Krakens. <laughs> you know what happened there little Jordan. Humphrey came back with three consecutive plays downfield where he just absolutely abused him on the back end. Once again, 109 yards now on the part of Humphreys without the complimentary part opposite of him, and the rest of the team is coming to the Calvary to help him out. Let me tell you, they may not need him after the performance he turned in in the first half. As you look at our Geico first half stats, the total yards, really the control of pace of play more than anything else beyond just the numbers, Spencer. It all started after the initial interception that was thrown off a surprising snap to Jet Duffy. And from that time on, Texas sort of got control of this game. But that late field goal at the end of the half certainly helps Texas Tech. And with more on what both coaches had to say through the first half, here's JP. Thanks, Tim. Tom Herman said he has been very pleased with the way that his defense has played against star receiver Antoine Wesley, really controlling him since the early going of this football game. He also said Brecken Hager has played about as much as he thought he would, but that he was in some pain again in the first half, had to get checked out there at halftime. Also, for the Texas Tech Red Raiders, Cliff Kingsbury telling me he liked the look of that quarterback sneak on the fourth down after the long possession by UT, so that was why he called it right there. Mm. Ellinger steps up after getting some pressure and decides to ad lib and then slides safely after a gain of perhaps four on first down. Just have a second and eight. Watson about three yards shy of a first down, so ahead for five. Jordan Brooks making the tackle. Timmy, to wrap up that thought on Dakota and the coach Gibbs, the way he handles his players, you know, he makes it a habit for all his players to check in with him every day. And we <laughs> talked about the eye contact. They've got to make body language eye contact with them. Otherwise, they get called in for a second time. I think it's a great way to stay connected with these Zs on the back end of the Millennials. It's they're a different breed. Got to make sure you stay engaged with them. 67% on the year on third down conversions. Tonight, six out of nine. This pass back shoulder wow. to Humphrey. What a catch. And exactly where Ellinger wanted to put it. And he had confidence that number 84, the junior from South Lake, Texas, would grab it. Well, there's really no way you can defend this particular throw in the play. Again, it was Marcus Fields, the right corner back there, trying to defend it. But man, when that's on a rope and it's a timing route, it's impossible to defend. That's Denver Duvernay, and he's got another first down. Inside the 30 yard line of Texas Tech Adrian Fry as you mentioned they've been picking on him all night whether it's little Jordan Humphrey or now Devin Duvernay now you're seeing the superior adjustment skill set of Tim Beck and coach Herman at the halftime finding some opportunities Watson stopped in his tracks by Jay Sean Johnson Tim you can learn so much about teams in the first possession of the second half of a game oftentimes they can Discern what can be exploited, but being able to transfer that to players and then execute it as part of that three phase, you got to tell them, you got to show them, and then you got to get them to do it. That's a monumental task, but we're seeing an example of it on display right now in this series. 
Duvernay is down at the bottom of your screen, number six. Second down and ten. Nice. Quick curl, and it's caught by Gerard Hurd, and he's got a first down. Nothing fancy about that, just zone coverage, sitting it down in those little soft boards, and this David Gibb defensive back end. Again, here's the isolation. Again, the soft spot right there is splitting the equal distance between the two defenders. It's not rocket science. And if you've got a quarterback as accurate as Ellinger is, the reason you put it in the middle, because it increases the distance that each defender has to go to affect the ball. From the 18-yard line, first and 10, opening series of the second half. Nice. Ellinger. Wow. Out pattern complete to Hurd. Yeah, they've been working on Adrian Fry all day. And again, Adrian Fry was trying to give them a, a false read. He came down like he was going to play man or press, and then he backed off. Again, I, I think the die has been cast. They know what he's about, and they're going to continue to work on him, even in the trip formation here inside. Ellinger decides to tuck it yep. and run yep. down to the two. You know, we should mention Adrian Fry has been a big play freshman. I mean, he's one of the top freshmen in the country out of the area that you're from, the Houston area. Four interceptions has been big in terms of breakups throughout the course of the year, but they've really worked him over tonight. And that's Watson. I don't think they gave it to him. About the half yard line inside the one uh, back to your point about Friday there's no question he's one of the top freshmen in the country uh, doing what he does right now he has four interception that leads the nation among freshmen out of the shotgun on second from the one after the initial hit Watson burrows ahead but is stopped behind the line of scrimmage anyway I think he lost that half yard yeah. third and one a lot of run support there from that back in for David Gibbs. Well, that negative outcome withstanding, Tim, this has been a tremendous effort getting some help from his battery mates with the push in. But this has been an excellent job as David Gibbs is looking for a solution to stop this opening salvo on the part of the Texas Longhorns to begin the second half. 11th play of the drive. Ellinger keeps it. Wow. Stop behind the line again. Boy, Jeffers is, that's two plays in a row that Rico has made. And again, to underscore the importance of his remaining eligible in this second half, the last two plays, number six has penetrated. They had Kay Brewer out there. This is straight power football, design run by the quarterback. And they call it, it no Ill, no intention what they're doing here. It's, just, it's no mystery, rather. The intent is to run the ball downhill off that left tackle side. Are you set up for play action here? Fourth and one. If he's in the pistol formation, I'd, they're still showing power here. Yeah, Daniel Young's in the game. Beck, by the way, the tight end sets up an H back. Play fake. Look for the corner. They did it to Duvernay. Touchdown. Play fake worked to perfection, did it not? It did because they were in a power formation right on the heels of a play that previously got shut down. But again, you can see that they had all power looks. Andrew Beck was back there in the traditional tight end position in the backfield. The exact same formation they had on the come up short opportunity on the previous play. So make the play look the same, but then play action off of it. I think it was a brilliant call. 75 yards, 12 plays, 443 off the clock, and the lead is up to two touchdowns. It started with this. Wow. Yeah, you're going to have some fun tonight when you got little Jordan Humphrey on your team. Senior night concluding and uh, Dakota Allen being honored by his family. This is a young man that had to leave school after his redshirt freshman year. Got his chance through, in a lot of ways, last chance you, you might call it. Yep. East Mississippi Community College. And was staring at uh, potentially being incarcerated and making a huge mistake in his life, but took advantage of that second chance Spencer and yeah. he had a favorable DA and, and again yep. coach took up for him as well and Kirby Hokut and uh, this administration stood by his side as well. Daquan Bowman will take it from the end zone. Good work by teams getting, getting down at the 15 yard line and Duffy little comeback route to Antoine Wesley. 
I love chatting with both he and TJ Basher yesterday. What a group of really nice young men that we were able to chat with. He knows that his future is now. No question about that. Out of Las Vegas, gain of 11 and it's first down. Just a three-man rush for Texas now. Plenty of time. Duffy with a pump fake. Now out of the pocket. Wow. What a throw. That's Jadion High on the receiving end. Coming back, that's 20 yards away. The pump fake may have been an accident, but it really worked. Yeah, nice little high-low action. 88, Jadavian High, as you said, was on the receiving end. But just underneath that, T.J. Vasher, number nine, was on the same side. So Jet had an opportunity to go either high or low on that. Texas has got to find a solution into the boundary. Speed. Zone read off to the edge. Goes Duffy. Well, you can't teach that, can you? Nope. <laughs> and that may be why J.P. Morosi got a quick response. That was a late fumble. There was a late fumble. I think they may be saying Texas has it. It's uh, Devontae Davis wow, on it. They're going to they give the ball away. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered wow. by the defense. First down. Wow. Well, that happened very late. Ball as he hit the deck. Sorry, partner, ball security comes at a premium. There was a statement we made when this drive began. Of course, you want to be concerned backed up. But you can see. Great play. That's a great play by Devontae Davis. Yep, he Did got you it. see him strip that? He raked it right out of there. 211 in progress. <laughs> see the man. Long horns have it. Take a look at it again. A marvelous play. I didn't see it initially because 45 Wheeler was trailing it, so Davis knocks it away, Spence. Well, it's clear. It's, it's almost clear like it two, out. almost yep. two feet from the boundary. The ball is in bounds and has the presence of mind as Devontae Davis to rake it in as well. Wow. So he created the fumble and created the opportunity to recover it as well. He's strong. That's Miami representing tonight. Uh, he's having an incredible game out of Booker T. Washington High School of yep. Miami. Yep. And to have him back after the shoulder injury he had is uh, very important. And Texas is really having to gut it out with all of the injuries they've incurred, especially on the defensive side. Deontay Ingram is the setback on first down. And they get six, seven yards at a chunk on the ground, and it's going to be a long second half for the Red Raiders. Seven yards there, second down and three coming up. Given the way, you know, before the half, the 18 play drive that ended in points. Texas has demonstrated they can possess the ball and play keep away. Texas Tech has got to find a way to generate a turnover themselves. Yeah, we're going to see a steady diet of what we saw against Kansas State mm -hmm. the week before the Red River Showdown. Wow. Look at this. Deontay Ingram. Oh. Now that would be a convoy <laughs> with a lot of traffic. Breaker, breaker, one mile. They had the 12-yard pickup on the ground for Ingram right there. Freshman from Carthage, Texas. Not too far from a little town called Beckville. Texas, Longview Lobos. Man, you're Good going football back coming into out of East there. Texas where yeah. we used to call some high school football back in the day. <laughs> Gladewater Center. Oh, yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah. First and ten. Ellinger, oh, nice flush. footwork. Let's it fly, boy, on its drop. Uh. Heard had it, dropped it. Yeah, and it just negates a tremendous opportunity to elude and keep his footwork in the pocket. I mean, that's another one of the things that goes under celebrated and appreciated. Ellinger moving in the pocket, keeping himself in a position to unload it if he needs to. But the receivers have got to pay it off on the other end, man. We got a chance to visit with him just before he got a little rehab late last night. The Texas plane was about 90 minutes late arriving mm -hmm. from Dallas, Fort Worth, or actually from Austin. And, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what he said to us oh, in a moment. Look there. at that. He did take a shot. That pass is caught by Epps. Malcolm Epps, the freshman, comes away with it. Well, look at the shot that he takes on the back end of this. Again, laid around the legs. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's really dangerous, man. You, it's tough to kind of keep your head up. But Joe Wallace comes in there really, really low, number seven. But Ellinger stays in there and delivers on the spot on the back end. You That's how you pay off an effort like that. Spencer, you asked him if there's one thing that you need to do tomorrow night, what would it be? He said, and he quickly said to you, keep my team out of negative plays. Yep. 
and Jeff, that, I mean, that was so honest. Stay out of her own way. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And he's done his part for sure. Ingram to the 36 yard line. Joshon Johnson, the saving tackle right there, man. That, good thing he was there on the spot. Otherwise, Ingram may have hit his head on the goalpost. Well, you're setting yourself up, are you not, with all this great run game for a little play action? Little Jordan Humphrey's got seven catches, 130 yards. And then it becomes math, Tim. But you have to look and see if that single safety that's sitting there now, at some point in time, that's telling you there's at least seven, maybe eight guys in the box. The play action is going to be perfect for that scenario. Ellinger under pressure, screen, and there's Ingram inside the 30 to the 29. So he was trying to set that up, yep. allow that pressure to come to him. But Ellinger was facing some pressure. Boy, he retreated a good bit of ways. This was a design call screen all the way, but look how far Ellinger had to, to move to facilitate the success of that play. And that's just a result of the constant pressure on the outside. Ellinger with time whips it. Nice defense. How about who made the play? <laughs> how about that? Douglas Coleman, the nickelback. Comes up with a very big play. The junior from Zachary, Louisiana. Now he's 6'1". He's got nice length. And again, that's what you're looking for in cover guys, whether it's a nickel or pure play guy. Got turned around backwards, but got that left hand in there. That's just excellent defensive play. Tremendous eye discipline. He's looking at the ball and tracking it all the way. There's Cameron Dicker now from 46 yards. He's against the wind. Not a problem. So he's hit a 52 yarder and a 46 yarder and the lead catapults to 17. Bowman's going to bring it from his one. Wow. He's got a little avenue here. Does he ever? Dicker the kicker made a big save. Turned him back in at the 37. Texas. Ever the since the they got the turnover, when Texas Tech was going in for a 14-point lead, they have been playing not only Strip City, but Grand Larceny against Texas Tech. I harken back to a year ago oh, yeah. and how quickly things can change with an explosive offense. They have seen a few too many turnovers from their quarterback, however, and and perhaps understanding that's not his skill set to throw it as a first yeah. approach. That could be part of what's of the exit. A little inside screen goes to DeLeon Ward. He gets ahead for about seven yards on first down, which is important. Anthony Cook making the tackle. Keyshawn Carter's checked into the game now at wide receiver 82. They're going to throw that little bubble screen out his way, and I don't know that he corralled it. Keyshawn. Maybe he did come up with it. Now they're going to rule it incomplete. So now Texas is beginning to show softer coverage. Again, it's not exactly a three cloud look, which takes away the short game. But the ball is dropped here. You can clearly see it doesn't have yep. control of it. It hits the ground. But what Texas is able to do because of the, the lead and the fact that Texas Tech doesn't seem to have any rhythm working right now, they can play soft coverage. Todd Orlando's defense has been outstanding. They have converted on third downs. But they haven't had many opportunities, and the turnovers have really hurt them. Might have a free play here on the cadence. Going long. It's caught. It's Wesley. It is touchdown. Offside. Defense number 90 in the neutral zone with the snap. Penalties decline. Touchdown. Well, Charles O'Menehu is on the opposite side of the formation. Again, obviously in the down lineman alignment. You can see the one-on-one -on -one matchup man coverage on the outside to the three receiver side. Nice separation here. A little hand fighting going on at the bottom end of that. But he comes up with the separation and what just shows you exactly why it's important to be long and more importantly. Have the focus enough to haul it in. Wesley does a fantastic job. Of you know, run. Spencer, I don't know that Texas Tech's record is going to be any better than it was last year, yeah. but they are a much better football team. No question about it. Defensively as well. Yeah. 
Guess what? Those fans that left a little early might be finding out what the score is now. But that was for a young man that's not known necessarily as a passer first, mm -hmm. a quality throw. Well, in practice, I don't think he's got a problem throwing it deep, but when you throw deep, it's really about accuracy yeah. on the other end, and that was about as accurate as it gets. The key is, can he do it consistently a couple more times? Little Jordan Humphrey is back deep. Well, that might have been a decision oh, that he'll close. live to regret. He does manage to get to the 18, but there's a marker down to go with it. You don't want to lose three in a row after what they did in the month of October. Deontay Ingram ahead to the 11-yard line. Listen, the, the narrative on Texas this season is improvement. Yeah. And that Ellinger's become a leader. And yeah, they've had some injuries they've absorbed. And all right, they dropped a game to West Virginia they'd love to have back. But you still have a path. You don't want to lose that yeah. in a November that they hope to remember. Well, you know that, and I know that, and discerning football fans know that. But in the zero-sum world of that is Texas football, a one-game improvement year over year doesn't sit well with yeah. their appetite. Yeah, not enough usually. Ingram. Boy, that's strong running. It is. Out past the 35-yard line, and late Jay flag. Johnson makes the stop and a late flag. Plus, they flip the field now with field position after this. So we'll check the flag. Inside zone read, and usually there's a holding of some sort in there. Guys trying to disengage. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary yep. roughness. Defense number 97. Wow. 15 yard penalty be added to the end of the run. First down. Boy, that's a real tough one. Joseph Wallace, 97, out of uh, Dallas Skyline. And he's uh, debating it, but it uh, will be to no avail. He's upset. Well, Dallas Skyline has produced a lot of great players over the years. You remember old Michael Carter, a silver medalist? Let's see him off the right hand side. Yeah, Ryan, just coming in yeah, there right can't there. do that. Can't do that. Nope. And he's played so well to that point, you know, and he again. has. First and ten now for Texas. Trying to answer and to reclaim authority of this game. Their lead has been cut to ten after that explosive play to Ant Antoine Wesley. Single safety look one high. Deontay Ingram again. The freshman from Carthage has played well. I've seen a little bit of Daniel Young. I think the feeling on Texas was wide receivers are good, quarterbacks arguably going to be fantastic, but our running game is pedestrian. Well, they've actually gotten better over the season. That's Ingram with 14 carries, 83 yards so far. Second down and five. Watson is the setback. He set sail for another first down. They're getting yardage now between the tackles very easily, Spence. Eight yards right there. Well, it's easier to do when you you got a three-man front that you're working against. Somehow you've got to get out of that kind of a faux cover two looking shell and bring those numbers down. Anytime you see two safeties, and you know, when you hear us talk about that, if I say it's one or two safeties, that's going to give you some inkling of how many bodies around the line of scrimmage. A single high safety means there's an extra guy around the line of scrimmage, which means the team is likely running the ball effectively. Two high safeties, usually a passing scenario. Less people needed around the line of scrimmage. From the 39, first down. Ellinger looping it long in the corner nice for touch. Duvernay. He's got a touchdown. There is a flag. I think it's going to be defensive pass interference. Yeah, it got to be. Pass interference. Defense number 23. Penalties decline. Result of the play is a touchdown. Demarcus Fields was beaten on that play. And Devin Duverday, the player that both Tim Beck and Tom Herman said to us, well, if LJ's not making the plays, we got to find. Duvernay. He does have the speed. And uh, while he may not be as athletic as Colin Johnson or as explosive, he certainly can make big ticket plays as he did, he did right there. His second touchdown of the game, his fourth of the year. Texas finding a way with Duvernay. Louisiana Tech was playing Rice tonight. And it's a touchback. Texas Tech will have it at the 25. And First and 10 now for 
Jet Duffy. Slings it out to T.J. Basher. Ahead for about eight, maybe nine. We'll call it eight. Anthony Cook with a nice stop there. Yep. At that right cornerback position. Actually second and one. And a quarterback draw and a quick seat mm -hmm. taken by the quarterback, Jeff Duffy. Got to get going. Trying to move as quickly as they can. Hope to gain a number more possessions to stay in it. He finds Basher again. Well, Texas has given them room, trying to make sure that Texas Tech stays in front of them. But that does allow Texas Tech to move quickly and get into scoring position. Well, you're down 17 points. Again, you got to go with urgency. That's the key. But you got to be efficient and protect the ball. Duffy dumps it off, shallow cross to J.D. on high. Well, he's had five games with six plus catches, six games with 70 plus yards and catches. And here's a young man with his sixth year of eligibility that's getting everything and then some out of it after missing his entire 2016 season with a foot injury. Second and six. Plenty of time. <laughs> Duffy's got everyone thinking, is he going to run or throw? He decides to tuck it and take it. And he still hadn't learned to put the ball in the opposite <laughs> hand. <laughs> Down to the 17-yard line. Gerald Wilbon, 94, finally, as he was running out of gas, brought him down. It's third and two coming up. This is one of those situations, if he throws the ball, there's probably a lineman downfield. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's right. I better run it. <laughs> Long way to go for four yards, but he did get four. DeLeon Warren. Yeah, good run. I like the way he runs, Spence. Yeah, he's Inside aggressive, the too. To the eight-yard line, and Wheeler did make the tackle. And, and DeLeon runs with aggression when he finishes. He probably gets maybe a yard and a half, possibly two yards, because he uses his right hand to keep Wheeler off of him. I mean, that's just smart, heady running. First and goal. Duffy Not under pressure out. and down. Back at the 18 yard line. And there's Wheeler again. Anthony Wheeler, the middle linebacker. Not impacted by the potential controversial call or not. He's just staying engaged. A late delay bunch. He had what they call a green dog. And a green dog means he has the right to go if the back has no blocking responsibility and is free to release. Got a little help from Brecken and Hager, too. And now Duffy decides after a few pump fakes to usher himself out of bounds inside the 20 yard line. You know, sometimes running backs stay in the backfield and they're not involved in the passing route. And if you're playing man to man or if you're a linebacker and you have him as a responsibility, you can be green lighted to blitz in that case because he's not, the running back is not involved in the route any. You can come up with some big plays that way. Well, you've got two shots to get it into the end zone. On third and goal from the 18 yard line. He dropped oh, it. Oh, wow. Oh, he had. Now he throws for open. the end zone. Incomplete. Zach Austin Tim, almost able to make a play on it. If, and if you can see the anxiety the here on the quarterback. B.J. Foster, the free safety, was there. Well, Zach Austin, had that ball not been dropped and been able to have been thrown, effect, thrown effectively, yeah. Zach Austin would have caught that ball. That would have been a touchdown. Foster almost got it. <laughs> On a ricochet for an interception. Yeah, he, he drops it there. You can see it. But Zach Austin, again, if the ball is out, because that was an immediate read, you can see Duffy's eyes were, he, there was no secondary read. It was an excellent play design. They got behind the coverage. And Zach was really waiting right there for the play to be completed a little bit sooner. Well, they want to cut it to a two score game. So Hatfield will try the field goal of 36, and he'll get it through. So that does make it a two score game with six and change remaining in Lubbock. 34 to 20 yard score. Texas with the lead. Looking to stay alive in the title hunt within this conference, which in a lot of ways, Spencer, has, I think, a lot of juice from a national standpoint in terms of who will get 
to Jerry World for the championship, given who's got to play whom in these next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's, it's going to be compelling. You know, it's almost like if you didn't know that the Bedlam was what it was, <laughs> nobody really wanted to seize that moment. Close games, balance of power is so even in this conference. I love the West Virginia win at home today. Oh, that, was that was an impressive. That was an impressive win yeah. today. A lot of people thought Baylor was playing very well and could be wow. good. Look at that. They go onside. Got they they got hit it. a Texas got defender. It. What a gutsy call. They hit a Texas defender, and that's Basher on it, I believe. Or Johnson, I beg your pardon. Tony Jones. Tony Jones rather than Basher. Nine rather than six. How big was that? Now you have the extra possession you needed. This is just perfectly executed. Hatfield right at the lock. Was that PJ Lock? Yes. Yeah. He, you got this is essentially a hands team look right here. You got yeah. some gifted guys up front. And it was Tony Jones who has been all over the place as an outside backer all night long. Andrew who, Beck is up there too. So this is the hands unit. So it's not like they're not expecting it coming. Those guys you see 11 and 47 up there, those are guys that are coached to knowing that they're there for that purpose. 6-2-0, 6-20 on right, the now, game clock. Now you're back in business. Oh, yeah. You have to score, maybe do it again, get the ball back. It's a two-score game. DeMarcus Quick curl. Look at that by Collins. He sat down on that one beautifully. Inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. 14 yards and a first down. Talk about a physical reaction. Collins, after he caught that, would sit down and pivot and turn like you said. Excellent. Blitz up the middle. Nice, it's red. Nice back shoulder. Back shoulder looked to be caught by Vasher. I think he got it. it. Yep. Yeah. Inside the 10 at the 8. And Cook is in disbelief. Maybe they're going to rule him out. Let's ba see. Back Let's shoulder see. time. Right. No, he's. Oh, the 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 completed pass, first down. And they're going to give it to him. <laughs> they now, are going to give it to him. Get snapped the ball. Go if you want to preserve the opportunity. You better go. 24 yards, and it's in the books now. Duffy decides to run it. He's down to the three. Hauled down by Chris Brown. Boy, Vasher. That catch was reminiscent of the one-handed one he made a year ago in this game. And whether it was conscious or not, the way he picked the ball up with his right hand to indicate some degree of control, yep. that was just beautiful. Career high yards for Duffy. He's going to remember those turnovers. But he has acquitted himself nicely, and his head coach has shown faith in him, even after the fumbles. He doesn't have much choice. Look out. <laughs> it's Ward out of the cat. De Leon taking it. Around the goal line, they've got a few in their hip pocket that they could go to already with the onside kick. You remember he's gone with a he had a Texas Tom Ruski that he ran for us a couple of years ago in one of these games. Quick timeout, we'll take it with him. Third and goal will be returned. After the first onside kick executed by Texas Tech this year, surprise PJ Locke to give them an extra possession. They're trying to convert now. Third and goal from the two. Nice. Duffy to the corner, touchdown, Basher. He did it again. And the kid that's all smiles all the time. <laughs> Tim is virtually the same concept, right? You're throwing into a back shoulder area. It's a timing route. Again, eight receptions, 87 yards, two touchdowns. Basher continues to rack him up. Timing route, pivoting, coming back to the ball. Seating it properly. It's a nice catch. Still like to see him catch with his hands, but can't argue with the results. The nephew of Nathan Basher, outstanding DB in the NFL and former Texas Longhorn, does it to Texas again. It's all at one score game. To do targeting lock like that. And give credit to Clayton Hatfield. That was a perfect onside. Recovered by Tony Jones. They had to convert fourth downs. They did it with Vesher inside the 10, full extension. 
and then the finishing touch. Well, the touchdown again was a, a derivative, kind of like a compressed version of what they've been successful with on that drive, the comeback, the timing route. But back to the original play that started the sequence of shots off, it was not like you had your average team out there. You had Andrew Beck out there. Yep. It was the hands team, and they did it in spite of having those guys out there. It was impressive. Now they go low, and a fair catch called for. Hmm. Watson and that, that's a winning play. It's about three three almost four yards three. So you get about three maybe four on yep. first down. Texas Tech has got to be thinking we want to hang on to the two timeouts we have left for as long as we possibly can. Second down and six right here. There's no question if you can hold them to three two yards on this one here now. It's not the run pass conflict scenario that you hope and maybe you can affect the quarterback this way if you want to take a gamble if you're coach David Gibbs on the defense. Got to hold him to three no more than three. Yeah that's a good play. Really good play. Good yep. penetration up front that time by Eli Howard 53 the sophomore from San Angelo Texas North Texas transfer. Third down and three right here. Yeah, now you see the body language is indicative of the context of this situation. Now they know they've got them in a conflict on the offensive side of the ball. Personnel, you got who you want in this game. The numbers tell you it's a passing situation, definitely. Just got to cover. The question is, will you try to create pressure from this side with the numbers? It looks, certainly looks like it. Eight of 14 on third down conversions tonight. They're coming. They are. Yep, Incomplete. Intended for Humphrey. Excellent series defensively. Boy, David Gibbs. He's good, man. Yeah, he knows when to dial up the pressure, doesn't yeah, he? He does. And again, sometimes the, the play dictates what you do. But a lot of times coaches don't have the guts to go with what the context is. Again, the numbers put you in an obvious passing situation. The quick slant is what they wanted or the out. Going with your tall receiver in the perimeter. But again, Fields and company did a Demarcus Fields did a fantastic job of defending. Buchevsky will boot it away. Dequan Bowman is back deep. Pretty punt. On his heels, he takes it. Bowman has an avenue. Mm. Stopped at the 23-yard line. Well, the last three meetings in this rivalry have been decided by one score. Last year, Nick Sheminek came off the bench, told his coach, you know, it's time. You might want to bring me in. It might get away from us. In 2016, Deontay Foreman rushing for a record 341 in the Longhorns win. In 2015, a shootout that gave Texas Tech its first win in Austin in nearly two decades. Something that... Cliff Kingsbury was unable to do as a player. He did as a coach. That was win at Austin for the first time. Now Cliff told us yesterday when Simonick told him, you better put me in, coach. He says, if guys got that kind of guts, that's a big deal. How many close games have they had of late? Tom Herman's Texas Longhorns. Duffy going deep. It's caught. It's Wesley. He's got it at the 30. And it won't matter. Anthony Wheeler was offside the middle linebacker, but they'll negate that thing. And they'll take the yardage behind door number one. Boy, what a great effort. Wesley going up from the X receiver position to snag that one. The chains can't Outside. even keep up with him. Defense, penalties decline. Results of the play, first down. Wesley, six catches, 152 yards. That one for 47. And they're about... 12,000, maybe more, masked riders that may be <laughs> riding back into the building now. <laughs> yeah. Trying to, anyway. Nice. Over the middle and caught. That's Seth Collins. It's first down. It's at the 17. I don't think very many receivers have had back-to-back -back games that even match where Wesley is. Had 12 catches for 199 against Oklahoma. Duffy for the corner. Incomplete for Wesley. To his credit, put it where only he could make the catch. Chris Boyd was defending. He took a whale of a hit. Did Duffy. Duffy got dumped on a little scissor stunt that was late. It wasn't the scissor stunt that got him off the edge. That pressure came. It may have been a lot. Tell you what, the kid has shown some courage, hasn't he? Hanging yeah, he, in there he really after has. the turnovers. Look at that. Fourth quarter, Texas Tech owning this game. 204 to 39 in passing yards. 
That's pretty incredible. It is incredible, but they've had to work from a deficit, Tim. That's been the problem. Second and 15. Nice. Over the middle. It's caught. That's J.D. on high. Close to a first down. 14 yards. Well, not bad for a former walk-on. Unbelievable. 433 yards passing now for Jet Duffy. Third down, a yard to go. Trey King back in the game. Now comes all out blitz. Over the middle. It nice. is touchdown. Antoine Wesley. Not bad for a guy that ended this season with just 12 catches for 146 years for the first two years of his career. Outstanding job by Wesley. And he's feeling it, man, big time. Wow. Todd Orlando's in disbelief. Well, he's tried everything he possibly could, and it's it's just individual matchups now. You know, you got a long frame like these two wide receivers do. 6'5, 200 pounds. I mean, that, that's a lot. I mean, they ought to know they got two big wide receivers when they're healthy themselves. The all important extra point. The Jet is back. 17 points for Texas Tech in the last four and a half minutes. Improbable, it's on Fox, and it's on now. Cool. Antoine Mo Wesley has been held down for two quarters, but he's been on fire in the fourth. And I think the idea that Basher and Wesley were sort of forgotten about for a while, well, the scouting report came back to Texas Tech in the fourth quarter. It really did, and they just unleashed it again. You know, you go into the game understanding what your limitations of your quarterback are, but you've got a sweet set of plays, mm -hmm. and you just rely on the skill set. Look at Jeff W. 36 of 40, 36 of 46. Impressive. Our hardest working player is sponsored by Duluth Trading Company. Tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen, and he has been hardworking as Wesley. Fair catch by little Jordan Humphrey, and Texas now suddenly in a tie game. Hellinger's in some trouble, tries to do it on his own now. He does manage to get a few yards out of it. Back to the 29-yard line, Eli Howard runs him down. Or, or our ratings just went up in West <laughs> Texas. <laughs> Here we go. Ellinger. Plenty of time. Now gets it done with his legs. And wisely oh. heads out of bounds, and he's going to get 15 additional yards for that. That's Rico Jeffers again. That's another opportunity. The Jeffers just needs to be aware of time, score, and space. That's 18 yards. You're going to get 15 more after this personal foul. You know, I don't. <laughs> Good gosh. His helmet was across the thigh there area. There's no foul on the yep. play. The runner was north south. Yep. First down. The clock was on the snap. He has been living dangerously, though, Spence. It's been close, but man, you don't listen. You never want to dial a guy back. I think that the right foot by Ellinger was actually still in bounds. No disagreement. Was still in bounds, yep. and so he hit the thigh area. And I, by the letter of the law, that's it's a clean hit. First and ten from the 46. They swing it out to Trey Watson. And it's DeMarcus Fields that chases him out of bounds. Excellent open field tackle. You can see the right foot of Ellinger. He's going to try to get as much as yard as he can. He slows down just a tad, but the right foot yeah. was still in bounds. Yeah. Tell you what. When Rico I, came flying in. I want to give these guys the officiating crews. Great job. A remarkable job tonight. A wonderful job Mike tonight. Mike Defee's one of the best. And Jack McDonald, our replay official, has... Uh, has been remarkable too. Four wides, four man rush. On second and eight, Ellinger in trouble. And I think yeah, he came back and made that mm -hmm. catch. 
Gerard Hurt, the Marcus Fields defending. Again, they're working that side. It was just a more of an improvisational effort on the part of Ellinger, but he paid it off as he's done so well. A lot at stake here for both teams. Clock winding down, Ellinger's pass incomplete. La Jordan Humphrey, the intended receiver. Remember, we were talking to David Gibbs about the game last last year. Looked as if Texas was going to salt it away. Just needed one more first down, and all of a sudden, Justice Parker took an errant pass from Ellinger away to salt the victory away. You know, Texas got to be thinking at this stage about just three because you've got a really good kicker in Cameron Dicker. He's at a 52-yarder, a 46-yarder tonight. He's 14 of 19 on the year. With a long of 52, right? Right. And that's tonight. He got the 52-yarder. Ellinger's got more than enough. Inside the 30 to the 29. Jordan Brooks hauls him down a 12-yard gain. Well, these Big 12 teams leaves us no shortage of high drama on the planes here. Ellinger. 283 passing yards, three touchdowns, 59 yards rushing, minus the sacks. That pass caught! Wow. It's Humphrey! It's touchdown! Oh my goodness! Beautiful throw and catch. If you talk about high point, this is what I mean when you want to go up to the highest point and pluck that ball out by giving yourself a cushion and not letting it climb on you. You keep DeMarcus Fields away from you and not able to intercept that ball. The only question I have is 21 seconds too much time. <laughs> I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> well, what an evening for Humphrey now. Eight receptions, 59 yards, 159 yards, two touchdowns. Here again is the touchdown catch. Fields is in a position to pick it. He really is. But as you stated, high pointing the ball. You wonder why announcers say it? That's why. <laughs> That's about execution. And again, there's Hurd right there to welcome him back there. Ellinger did a nice job of executing that play. And that's why he's the unquestioned leader of this Longhorn ball club. And Fans, for, the gallery to start to stream yeah. away. Boy, you <laughs> should have stayed for your money's worth. This is one of those situations, Spencer, where I think in a lot of ways, Dequan Bowman is back there, and I know he's a good return man. He just take the fair catch, right? Get the 25 and get all you can out of yep. uh, the three plays maybe that you'll get here. You do have two timeouts left. Yeah, you got two timeouts, and you, you're going to work the perimeters. No question about that. Uh, give this young man credit. Jet Duffy has stood tall after some mishaps. In both the first and second half. Now in trouble. 3D. 3D. Roach giving the pressure. Now Amenahu. And uh, this is not what That's you want to do. That's not what you want to do. No. You're, you're going to burn one of your timeouts now. And Gary Johnson makes the stop. Yeah, that's not smart. Lost a yard. Texas Tech takes their second timeout of the half. Please set the game clock to 13 seconds. 1 3. That play was in trouble from the jump. Mm hmm. Well, they're going with just a. Two down linemen, it appears, and everybody back. Yep. Three safeties all the way back. I'd move him to the right. I'd move line. him to the right. Get him out of the pocket. Come on. Wow. Now they go That's, underneath. There's just nothing an, oh, there. Oh, wow. And Ward is down. He got up three his next time up. Wow. And now you're reduced to sort of the rugby play at the end as that, Gary Johnson makes the tackle. That surprised me there on that call. <laughs> what, a, what a game, though. Do these two deliver? They really do. And that's going to do it. Yep. Texas survives. And we do mean survives. Wow. Two coaches that worked really hard and fought through a lot of injuries. Both of them had it, particularly given the loss of Alan Bowman last week in the second collapse lung. You see the emotion now. From the Red Raiders, senior night will not go their way as it did not go Texas's way 
a year ago Thanksgiving weekend in Austin. Well, Tim, I just can't make enough and say enough of as Cliff Tinsburg makes his way. You can see the dejection there on those Red Raiders on senior night. But again, Devontae Davis, Brecken Hager, Malcolm Roach, mm -hmm. Brandon Jones, Chris Nelson, all of them injured. To be able to pull away a win here was a big deal. J.P. Morosi is downstairs with Tom Herman. Thanks, Tim. Coach, in a couple moments, what will you tell your team about how and why they won this football game? Well, turnovers, field position, uh, you know, it, it's a, a mash unit on defense right now, but they kept fighting. Uh, and at, at the end of the day, you know, offensively, it's it's uh, you learn as a young coach, think players, not plays in critical moments. And, you know, number 11 and number 84 are really good for us. You mentioned that play. What were the reasons you loved that call? Well, we're, he's uh, as good a jump ball guy as there is in the country. And uh, if we get one-on-one -on -one coverage, we're already in field goal range. If we get one-on-one -on -one coverage, we're going to try for the win. And with Sam, what can you say about the calmness that he shows your team? You had given up a 17-point lead. What did he do in that huddle before that final drive? Well, we, you know, we, we were in the same position in the Cotton Bowl. And uh, we went down and, and kicked a field goal to win the game. And so uh, nobody on the team wants anybody other than number 11 behind center in situations like that. And uh, they believe in him. And, and he was uh, calm, cool, and collected. And he was aggressive but not reckless. <laughs> As you said yesterday, Coach, congratulations. Thank you very much. Tim, back to you. Oh, those adjectives work well. <laughs> aggressive but not reckless. And in the, in the heavens above, his longhorn dad is smiling down on his son. Sam Ellinger, who made it happen to little Jordan Humphrey, appropriately named. And Texas comes away a winner. Yeah, the heavens are burn orange tonight. Incredible game here in Lubbock. And for Spencer Tillman, J.P. Morosi, and our entire Fox Sports crew, this is Tim Brando saying have a great night. We'll see you again next week right here on Fox.